auditioning, auditioning, auditioning. Thug number one, thug number two. For slaves. Prostitute. There's always the hustle. Literate basketball players. Mary had a little lamb. The thug. The only narrative that they understand of black life is drug addict, drug dealer, gang member. I was the hottest black actor in the world after Boys and I. There were people clamoring to work with this young sensation. As long as he did the roles they wanted him to do, which were street kids. I had been in this thing that is a masterpiece of American cinema, and nobody gave a shit. <laughs> they really didn't give a fuck. I auditioned for my first pimp part, the mother's all proud. You know, be the best pimp you can be. The whole church is praying for me. Let's pray that Brother Robert gets the role of Silky Good Dick. The film is called Holes on the Stroll. It sounds like a musical. And then that's when the filmmaker was born. I said, man, we can't let Hollywood tell our stories. We have to tell our own stories. The filmmaker doesn't do anything and everything. And these images travel around the world. They had a perception of us that ultimately is false. YouTube, it's your man Ronan back with another one. This is not going to be a five minute fire wash. This is going to be shooting from the hip as usual, but something leaning towards a new direction of things. Uh, before I get into it, I want to say mad love to uh, A Game Nation. Shout out to all my veterans across the board. Salute to you guys. Hope you guys are doing okay. Um, hope all is well with you and yours. And let's keep kicking ass and taking names. And all subscribers, both new and old, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell for future videos. And if you notice, I, I've been a little bit off of my pattern putting up videos and whatnot, but it was for an intended purpose. When there's a whole heap of things on your mind, sometimes you need to sit down and really see what you're looking at, what's really going on. Make that personal assessment of things, not just yourself. But everything in general, which is going to lead me to the topic today, which is it's not just what you eat, it's who you eat with. Now, in doing this whole thing with um, the gym, it's been motivating. It's been a place of peace. It's been a place of um, recovery, more or less. Aside from the fact I'm dealing with Something going on, on my left knee. A little bit uh, issues with my right, not as much. Still dealing with the uh, slightly misaligned right collarbone. But more than anything, being around that environment and talking to those personal trainers, it was cool to have like discussions that were needed. Talking about things as far as financial, which is really a good source to network and speak with people in that area. Because they come from all walks of life looking to improve themselves, fix themselves. But we got into the conversation about diet. And I talked to them and they had their thoughts about it. It's one thing to manage our caloric air intake, how much water we, we have every day, to make sure we're up and running, our maintenance. What you're talking about, that's number two on the 10 life values, health. And it deals with the spiritual. Because in that time in the gym, whenever I'm going through things, when I need to get things worked out, out of my head in a proper fashion, I put on my headset sometimes and I'll go on the Stairmaster, a treadmill, go out to the uh, steam room for about five minutes, sit in a jacuzzi to take care of you know, the tendons, joints, make sure I eat the proper uh, supplements and vitamins and things. Aside from A-game, you already know the deal. <laughs> Aside from all that, while that's all good, 
who are you eating with? Many times over, people can easily get intimidated or distracted by what they see in the gym. And mentally, you're consuming a lot of information of what you see, what you hear, um, both good and bad. But you have to use that level of discernment as a proper filter to ward off certain things while you're looking to stay on track. See, in this space, especially now this season, there's a whole heap of bullshit that's going on. People out here beefing, people, you know, talking a lot of bullshit. And it's for Christmas gifts and whatnot. Whatever last minute bullshit bonanza, that's what they're going to talk about. But let's take this offline too. Imagine you going to a great restaurant and shout out to 131 Main, which is awesome food. Those times I went there, while the food was great, doctor door, everything quality, worth the money. It was the measure of camaraderie, the conversation that made the consumption of that food even better. The energy there, the vibe. Now take that instance for your respective self. It doesn't have to be the restaurant setting, just in general. When you're serving up ideas, concepts, uh, plans, legacy, things of that nature as men. How are those people conducting themselves around you at that table? Do you have that goofy motherfucker that wants to chew with his mouth open? Oh, this is good. Spewing all kind of food and bullshit everywhere. Fucking up his appearance. The dwelling is all kind of shitty. <laughs> thanks to them. Knowing they're spiritually fucking crippled. Health-wise, it's unsanitary, just in, in, among many levels. And it kind of, like, makes a bad look on the family. What about those individuals who get real sloppy when it comes to their plate? Not only do they order a whole heap of shit, but they don't order the right shit. See, so you need the greens to get that roughage out. That roughage will be... The truth. The truth always filters its way through your system and, and clears all that shit out. That's why you feel better when you drop that old shit. But see, there's some people at your table that haven't shit in days. Or they're built like to the types that they like to keep a whole lot of shit at the table. Passing gas. When they should be holding that shit in or excusing themselves and keeping it out there. For example, passing gas. Motherfuckers shitting on your vision. Throwing doubt in your, your face. Sometimes they even do all kind of shit like love bomb the shit out of you. Gaslight you. Do passive aggressive behaviors at the fucking table. So you gotta be mindful of who you invite or keep at the table. Sometimes, as great as the food may be, sometimes you need to take that shit to go and let them eat there before they get kicked out. What about when they make it a point to make some homemade bullshit, carrying bones, from another motherfucker's plate and serving them to you. Now, what does that say to you that they're willing to do that with a smile on their face? Or they're looking for a tip for serving you shit that isn't it worth sitting in front of your face or consuming. So them being bone carriers, they're expecting you to pick the bones and Ignoring all the spittle and whatever shit they brought with it for you to consume under their watch. How about when you are enjoying your food? I'm talking about living your life, 
breathing life into your vision, being around better situations because you worked on your appearance, not just externally, but internally to eat in a certain establishment. And here come these bum ass motherfuckers putting their feet on your table, eating off your plate after they started digging in their ass. Things like that. You got to be mindful. Think about all the empty conversations that produce empty calories when you're trying to fatten up your legacy or your financial portfolio or your appearance in a proper fashion. See, when we go about life in general, we got to be careful of the energies and conversations and thoughts that we consume. Because see, that will make you sluggish. That leads to sloth and gluttony. You have to be a very, very <laughs> anal retentive steward of your time. See, if I'm going to put, put my money and my time, my resources into something that I'm looking to consume and get the benefit out of, I want to enjoy it. And that's why I encourage you my brothers mainly to do far too often we feel we're being treated <laughs> with five star treatment when all it is you're getting slid a lukewarm hungry man dinner stale kool-aid where someone took their finger and stirred their finger in your drink And they were sitting there scratching their box, which they haven't washed in days, and they're patting you on the shoulder on that. We got to learn how to worry about our table etiquette when it's time to prepare the things that we're doing. Many times over, we're taking our time to get the nutrients and the food prepared for the harvest that we're looking at. With all that aside, you have to be very mindful. Who are you sharing the table with? How are their table matters in life? See, when I'm eating my food, what you eat don't make me shit. Nor should you. But for some reason, we had too many people watching your plate. Oh, man, you know, your, your, your shit ain't here yet, blah, blah, blah. No, it's being prepared. I remember, and I'm going to close with this. I remember going out there. My brother, DS1, was waiting on his food. Everybody was pretty much eating theirs, but it was cool. And I sat back and observed this. I'm like, you know what? Let me slow down. Now, that wasn't on me to do it, but it's like I didn't feel right Knowing that, hey, that's kind of fucked up. You know, I'm eating and this person's, you know, food isn't being prepared right. So I slowed the fuck down and we sat there and ch chopped it up. But see, I'm the type of person that if I eat and I fuck with you, you're going to eat. That's why when it comes to brotherhood, you have to be very mindful of who you allow at your fucking table. Some people are just looking for handouts. Some people are gluttons for goofiness. We don't eat the same. Our dietary demands and needs are not the same. So you have to really question that if you're going to maintain the integrity of that said brotherhood. Because it's going to get to a point where you can't stomach certain people's shit nor their habits Know the individual in due season. Take that for what you will. But do make sure you take that proper time and energy and focus to concern yourself, not just the quality of the food that's being served to you or being prepared for you, 
but the quality of the motherfuckers that you allow to eat around you. This is life in general. This is something I've had to learn the hard way, as many of us do. But with 2022 coming up, are you able to stomach the consequences of eating around people with piss poor table manners? You guys let me know in the comment section what you think. As always, never let your comfort zone become your coffin. And two, it always takes a pussy to expose and control one. Sometimes they'll put that on the table. Now, as crass and classist as it is, there is a time and place for that, but it says a whole lot who to individuals who want to do that shit in public settings. Marinate on that. Salute to you guys. Take it easy. Peace.